so good morning and welcome to this little video and this one is a bit different it's a bit slower and a bit longer than my usual videos and you're gonna see me take all of these photos in pretty much real time but of course I don't know yet that these are the photos I'm gonna take <laughs> But yeah, I'm out here in the field, it is pretty early in the morning and this place usually has a lot of insects to photograph so I'm starting out here and we'll see what we can find Can I first have a look here by these flowers Gotta turn on my equipment. <clears throat> my old trusty Godox TT685. With wireless transmitter. <clears throat> and my Sony A73. And my Laowa 60mm macro lens. I'm gonna link all of these products in the video description as always. This early in the morning usually there isn't as much activity as in the middle of the day. Uh, here we see a hoverfly. But the insects you do see tend to be a bit calmer and often easier to photograph. I'm gonna set the flash at 1 16th and now I'm setting my camera at 1 200th of a second, ISO 100 and I'm setting the lens to f8. Those are good starting settings. Where did the hoverfly go? <laughs> uh, this is why you should always prepare your settings before you go out <laughs> and test that they work out fine. There he is. Okay, he seems a bit skittish. But here is something else. That was also a bit skittish. Let's move on. There's a snail here. Let's see if we can take a nice photo. I'm gonna place the flash here. Oh, now he's getting scared because he saw the flash. That was not good. Let's wait a little. In the meantime I can set the magnification which I think maybe one half is good. And let's try, try to get a photo. Okay, it's too dark. Let's lift up the flash a bit. I'm gonna increase the magnification. Set the flash closer because I didn't get the light I wanted. Now oh, it's better. It's gonna enable focus peaking as well to easier see. Die. I'll try one from the side as well. Okay. 
this and it was my nice with the light. Alright. That's enough for that guy. Here we have a little bug or something. Gonna increase the uh, magnification to 11 <laughs> or two times. See if we can get a shot. He crawled away. Now I see another bug which is a lot smaller. What the hell is that? I think it's too small to photograph anyway. Yeah, the bug crawled away. I think I'm gonna try walking a bit in this direction. Just checking the <laughs> camera angle. Yeah, hopefully you guys will see when I take photos. Here is a hoverfly again. It seems a bit skittish. Sometimes they can be kind of attracted to the flash and interested and sometimes they are very easy to photograph, but not always. You like the flash? No. So this video is a little bit of an experiment. Um, I've never done anything similar before because I thought it would be too boring. Uh, but, oh, here is a small, small snail. Cute one. Let's see. Let's put the light like that. Oh, it's hard to get too much of it in focus but still it can sometimes produce a nice photo I like bokeh so everything doesn't have to be in focus <laughs> I think that is maybe why I'm so drawn to macro photography because you always, no matter how you do it you get a lot of smooth bokeh oh here we have a striped bug Italian striped bug, I love these guys because they are pretty beautiful and they are easy to photograph. Now I'm jinxing it, but usually they are easy to photograph. Let's see. I'll put the light here. Hello. Okay, I'm gonna put the light here to get the shield. That's pretty nice. I'll try to get one from this angle as well. Uh, hey, stand still. I want to get like a head-on shot of the shield. 
Now we can get some sky in the background, maybe. I'm gonna try decreasing the shutter speed to 1 60th to get more sky in the background. But now we turn around, so there is no sky in the background. <laughs> Let's try twisting the plant a bit. And uh, putting the flash like this. Oh, no. He fell off. Sorry, mate. Let's move on. I'm kind of lazy in the sense that I don't hunt down insects that fall off a plant or that walk away or stuff like that. I, I just move on because there are so many insects and uh, I have found that when I do try to hunt down insects that go away <clears throat> I usually spend a lot of time hunting and I don't get that many shots anyway. So I think it's better to go for the easy targets. Here is some kind of white bubbly slime. I guess it is some insect that is hatching there in some way. I don't think this would be a good photo but I just wanted to photograph it for you guys. <laughs> so you know what I mean when I say bubbly slime. What a wonderful morning. I think it is around 6 a.m. Usually I go out photographing in the middle of the day, but now uh, the kids are homesick and the only time I have to go out photographing is when they are asleep. <laughs> that is why I'm out at this hour. Here we have some small fly or something. These are usually skittish, but let's try. Oops. Hello. Are you stuck in the web? Or are you just hanging out? It doesn't look very stuck. Can I get... Where did you go? Oh, there's a spider as well, but I'm not even gonna try photographing it because spiders in webs, these small spiders in webs, I never get them to look good, these photos, so I don't even try anymore. The web gets like in the way and it just looks messy. Here we have two striped bugs hanging out, and here is another one. Gonna decrease the magnification slightly from to one and a half time. See if we can get them both in one frame. Uh. Let's try this way and let's be careful. Okay, it's kind of hard to move in without moving the whole plant. Trying to get them both in focus at the same time by finding the focal plane. Alright, I don't think that will be a terrific shot anyway, so I'm gonna leave it there. Also, I don't wanna separate them by mistake now that they are have found each other. That would be mean. <laughs> Here we have another striped bug. They seem to be everywhere.
I'm gonna try having the light from the front, could be cool. Not sure I like this photo, it's too much um, stuff in the background. I think I want to get a shot of these flowers from the side. I'm gonna leave the flash there and just go without flash. That's a pretty nice composition. Holy Trinity of Prestkragar, as these are called in Swedish. I'm gonna try it from this angle as well. I'm still in manual mode, but I happen to know that 160 and ISO 100 is pretty good in daylight like this, or like shadowed daylight. And since the dynamic range of this camera is excellent, I can always expose a bit wrong and then just correct it, so it's not, no issue. I see even more striped bugs over there in couples and singles. Even more of them there. But when you've taken enough striped bug shots, you start yearning for something more unusual. The greatest feeling is when you get a good photo of something you haven't captured before. Oh, is that a red weevil? No, it was a ladybug, but I love ladybugs, so let's try to get a shot. Let's see. I think I want the light come come from this angle. 45 degree angle from the face. Okay, there's too much stuff in the way, I think. Let's see. Oh, that's a pretty nice shot. Oh, I love that one. I think this is my favorite shot so far today. Oh, now he moved a bit. Can we get another shot when it's on the grass? Hello. Ah. So hard. Find a good stance. Okay. Here we have a small fly sitting upside down, not sure if he's sleeping or what's going on. Let's try a shot where the sky is in the background and the light comes from below, that could be cool if I get the shot right. Ah, oh, he crept up to the flower. Well, well. Let's leave him then. <laughs> I 
If you want to know more about my settings and everything and my gear and for example how to get a bulb like this for your flash uh, just have a look in the description I'm gonna link some useful videos there and also just look at my channel page in general uh, because I made a ton of videos about macro photography and how I do it so everything you want to know is there in my videos and also of course feel free to ask in the comments I try to answer every question I get uh, also follow me on Instagram, I'm active there every day and uh, post my photos and uh, answer questions. I think I'm gonna try moving towards the trees and bushes here, just to see if I can find something different. It's not a great feeling to walk in tall grass like this because there usually are a lot of ticks but sometimes you have to take some risks. <laughs> When I get home after walking in tall grass, I always check myself. Usually there is nothing when I've been in this area, so maybe it's not that many ticks here, but also of course depends on the season and the year. Some years there are more. Also, I have gotten three doses of the vaccine about against T, is it TBE, TBH? Whatever <laughs> the virus that you can get, uh, but there's still the bacteria infection, Borrelia, which you cannot get vaccinated against, and that one can be pretty terrible as well. But I'm not that afraid of ticks, I've had many throughout the years because I grew up on the countryside and nothing ever happened to me. Oh, we have, uh, what are they called? Damselfly? I've never gotten one of these before. I think they are pretty skittish. That's, yeah, I'm not sure if it's even worth trying. This is one of the unusual situations where you might need a longer working distance on your lens. Yeah, I mean, this guy is not looking to be photographed, that's for sure. Oh, here we have a mosquito. I don't want you to bite me. By the way, to get all of the self-promotion out of the way, <laughs> if you liked this video, I do new videos about macro photography every week. Try to post two videos per week, sometimes it's only one, but I do post something every week, most weeks. Here we have a stink bug sitting, <laughs> hey go away, sitting in a pretty convenient position, let's see. Hello. Okay. You got two chances. <laughs> Hope I got don't get the whole macro community against me now because I killed an insect. I've actually gotten a lot more empathetical with insects since I started with macro photography. No, I never kill them unless I see a very good reason.
I think this photo will turn out pretty good. I like how the light is falling. Just gonna see if it is sharp. Oh, nice. Oh, that's a keeper. Let's try another angle, even though I think this was the best angle. Ah, that was hard. Oh, I hate when this happens, when the leaves are in the way, so you cannot really approach. Okay. That was an interesting angle, but not very pretty. Oh no. Sorry, he fell off. <laughs> I tried plucking the leaves to get a better view, but I accidentally uh, made him fall off the branch. Here is a small spider in a web. I don't think it will be a good shot, but let's see what we get. I'm gonna turn the magnification to max. Uh, that was pretty cute, but not my favorite photo. What time is it? Six. Kids usually wake up around seven, so I have a bit more time. <laughs> also just gonna... Um, check if the video is still running. Yeah, seems like it. Nice. So, as I was going to say in the beginning of the video, but an insect interrupted me, is that uh, I actually got inspired to do this video by a channel called, I think it's called North Borders. It's a guy in Australia doing street photography this way, with a camera strapped to his chest, but I have it strapped to my head. And the reason is that uh, that is uh, a lot better for macro photography. I noticed when I tried out different setups, and I didn't think I would enjoy that video uh, that he did. Uh, but I clicked it because it had 1.5 million views, so I figured it must be something good about it. And I really, really enjoyed it. It was very relaxing just to see him uh, go out and reason with himself and take photos. So. I got inspired to try something similar for macro photography. So I went ahead and actually bought this exact same action camera as he used because I liked the way his footage looked. DJI Osmo Action. And this seems like a decent action camera. Also it's very cheap, at least in Sweden it was a lot cheaper than uh, like a GoPro or something else. Hmm. Not finding much here except mosquitoes, and they are finding me. Here we have a very small fly. Let's see if we can get it before he runs off.
Not a lot of macro photographers shoot, seem to shoot flies, but I love them. I think they are pretty nice with the big eyes. Oh, look at this guy. Can we get a portrait? What are these guys called? I'm so bad at insects. <laughs> ah, could be a cool shot. He is very chill, he still just sits there. Just hanging on to the leaf for whatever reason. Maybe stretching. Oh, here we have some kind of fly that looks a bit weird. Is it like pregnant or is it just supposed to look like that? It's come some kind of hoverfly, I think. Can we get a shot maybe? No? Okay, he did not want to model today. Oh, here we have another bug. Let's see if we can get him. Hello. Okay, light is not great. Hard to hold the leaf and the flash with the same hand. Try this. Ah, I'm giving up. <laughs> oh, here we have a tiny, 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 tiny ladybug. Let's try this. Ah, uh, not sure how these turned out. I think I need one free hand. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna place the flash here. Uh, like that. And then I'm gonna... No! Oh, sorry man. I lost it. He fell down. Looks like some animal has been sleeping here tonight. The grass is all down. Maybe not sleeping, but resting for a while. There usually are a lot of hares and deer around here. Here we have a small bug. Gonna increase the shutter speed because now the sun is shining at the same time and then um, I need a higher shutter speed because otherwise the sun is competing and you can get some motion blur. Low shutter speeds work great with flash when there is no direct sunlight. Oh look at this guy. <laughs> That's a pretty spaced out shot. Hello. Gonna remove the. Let's hold it against the sky for more effect. Ok. 
trying to ah. Oh, not sure if I got the ice. Ah, close enough. Well, anyway, I thought it would be a cool idea to try to do a video like this where you can see me shoot in real time because I've never done that, so I think maybe an important aspect of teaching macro photography is lost when I just cut out like five minutes out of a one and a half hour photo walk. Oh, here we are, fly. Hello. Can we get light from below? That would be cool. No! Hey! Stay! Okay, yeah, that's... Light from below doesn't work when you're inside the leaf like that. Okay, let's try from the top then. I think one of the best ways to improve your macro photography once you have learned the basics is to constantly experiment with different angles of light and different angles of the camera against the subject and also against the sky. Try to find the best combinations there. That is what I think produces the nicest photos once you uh, start seeing some good patterns there and internalize those. I'm not saying I am very good at it, but I'm uh, trying to improve. What's this? Oh, cool. Since I suck at insects, I have no idea what it is, but I have never photographed one of these before. Hmm, not sure how I'm gonna approach it. I think I need to remove that leaf. And... Have the flash like that. Okay, that way of lighting it was not good. Let's try like this.
Ah, oh, it's tricky. When I just have two hands and three things to hold. Lucky I'm not holding the camera today, the video camera. Not sure how pretty that one is. Not very pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you know what this is, please tell me in the comments. Guess it's some kind of larva or something. Maybe it will be a butterfly or something. I'm completely guessing because I don't know that much about <laughs> insects. I bought a couple of books about insects, but I haven't had time to read them yet. Then the lion clocks can be very nice to photograph. You can pluck away a bit of it like this. Hold it like that. Just experimenting a bit now. Oops. That was not so good. Well, that photo did not turn out great, but sometimes they do. <laughs> Here we have one of these guys. No. Hello. Okay, seems he walked away. This is maybe another one of those larva things I photographed, or at least a similar one. This was a much better angle. Check how long we've been going. Four to six minutes. I think that's enough. You need to start heading home, and you guys are probably bored by now. So, thank you a lot for watching. Uh, this was like an experiment and if it does well, if you guys like it and if it gets decent amount of views, I would love to repeat it. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for watching all the way here and uh, see you next week again.